video is hypothesis testing again. We're about to finish this long problem we've been working out. It's um, in this problem we're going to be talking about the initial and final conclusion. So of course, uh, when we get to the final conclusion, we're done with the problem. So let's recap what we've done thus far. We had a pair of hypotheses, right? We had basically a claim that said the mean was greater than four. That was the mean time to complete a bachelor's degree was greater than four. We had an HO that the mean was less than or equal to four, and we had an HA, which is that the mean was greater than four, right? So we had those three pieces. We also had a test statistic, that test stat. That test statistic was Z equals to 5.66. This was a very large, very extreme test statistic. And then we came up with a critical value and we had that critical value, we assumed that alpha was 2.5% and we had then a critical value of 1.960. In order to determine the initial conclusion of the test, it's a very simple, simple procedure. We just have to plot this test stat on the Z number line down below. If that test stat lands on the number line over here, we will reject the HO. So should it land to the right, of this point, this critical value, we'll reject HO. Should it land to the left, we do not reject HO. Of course, you can see that this value clearly lands over here. 5.66 is way down there on the number line, so it's definitely in the category where we would reject HO. So that is our initial conclusion. So we're going to say it essentially reject HO. Now, what we want to do then is think about the consequences of that, and that gives us the pair of initial conclusions we can come up with. We can only come up with two distinct pairs. There's no other option, because either you reject HO or you don't. If you should reject HO, you get this result. You get the idea that you've rejected HO, and that has the consequence that you must therefore support HA. You must support HA, because that's its competition. This guy's wrong, this guy's right. That's the way it goes, right? So we're going to say support HA. So that is our first pair of initial conclusions. We could have done something else though, right? That test stack could have landed in here. It didn't in this case, but it could have. And if it did, we would have said, do not reject. Do not reject HO. Which would go with do not support HA. Do not support HA. So basically, just throw do nots in front of these two statements, right? All right, so that's that. So now when you look at it, you have only two possible scenarios that can occur. Either you reject HO and therefore support HA, or you don't reject HO and therefore you do not support HA, right? Because saying you do not reject HO is basically say leaving it alone, right? If you leave it alone, then we're going to allow that to be true, and we're not going to support HA in favor of HO. So there are only two possibilities. Now, once you have one of those two possibilities, it's time to come up with the final conclusion. The final conclusion. And that's actually really simple. <clears throat> what we want to do to come up with the final conclusion is to just basically think in our heads a very simple idea, which is to say, what was the original claim? Make sure that your word, your answer, to reflect the original claim. So what we want to do is say, okay, in this problem, the claim here, was it HO or HA? Well, it turned out in this problem, and just this problem, right? It doesn't always have to be this way, but in this problem, the claim was HA. Sometimes the claim is HO, but here it's HA. So we assume the claim is HA, then basically we have to make sure we word our answer to say something like this, that we support the claim. If our claim had been HO, we would have said, we reject the claim. And that's it. It's that simple. So you'd say the sample data, support the claim, da 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 da. The claim that the mean time to complete a college degree, a bachelor's degree, is greater than four years. Or you'd say the sample data causes us to reject the claim, right? That's one possibility. Now, if we had come to this decision or pair of decisions, again, our claim would have been HA, and we would still have to say here this. So we'd have to say the sample data does not support the claim. Or we could say, if the claim was HO, the sample data does not allow us to reject the null hypothesis.
analysis, something like that. So that's essentially your phrasing. So the only thing you can say then is four unique statements. You can either say the sample data allowed you to reject the claim, the sample data allowed you to support the claim, the sample data does not allow you to reject the claim, the sample data does not allow you to support the claim. And that's it. That's all you can say. How do you know which one to say? Well, you first figure out which pair, which box you have, right? We rejected HO, so we're in this box, which means we don't look at this. That's not part of our problem, right? Then above here, that leaves two things we could say. We can either say the sample data rejects the claim or the sample data supports the claim. Because our claim is HA, we choose this one, which means we don't look at that phrase either. So finally, we're down to the last phrase that we can say, which is the sample data support the claim that the mean is greater than four years. And that's it. That's how you do your initial and final conclusion.